I've got another Doji device from China. This time it is this lithium ion battery charger. You just take a standard lithium ion battery, put it in. Here we have an LED indicator. Just engage those pins and plug it in. The only problem is that it doesn't fit into European socket. They call this a European plug, but it doesn't fit into any type of sockets in Europe. So I have to use this very dangerous Chinese adapter to be able to use it. Now let's plug it in. Maybe it's gonna catch fire, but no worries. I've got this special fire extinguisher here. With no battery the light is green. When I put a battery into it, it goes red. And when the battery is full, it turns green again. It says the input voltage is 110 to 220 volts, 47 to 63 hertz. The output voltage is 3.7 volts, 450 milliamps, and the end of charge voltage is 4.2 volts plus minus 1 percent. The open circuit output voltage is about 4.27. Little bit too high, but still kind of okay. But wait, the voltage is in minus, so it's a wrong polarity. I'm putting positive to positive and negative to negative. And it's showing minus. So the polarity is the other way around. What the heck? But I was already putting a battery into it according to this picture. And it was charging. How this is possible? Does it automatically detect the polarity? Let's try to measure the current. And the current is flowing the right way, so it probably detects the polarity. It's charging at about 250 milliamps. Now let's try to swap the polarity. And now the current is still flowing the right way. From the positive to the negative, so... It really detects the polarity of the battery and chooses the right direction of the current. So this one is more clever than I expected. Even though it's charging at only about 250, not 450 milliamps. Let's try to measure the short circuit current. Maybe this is not a good idea, but anyway. Only about 40 milliamps. So this one can detect a short circuit and reduce the current. Nice. But now let's take a look inside. There are three screws, one here and the other two here. And that's it. There's the plug. A very questionable plug actually. And this is the board. Here you can see the contacts. Making contact with this plug. On the board I can't see any line where the mains is isolated from the output. It's just one jungle of tracks without any clear isolation line. That's a bit scary. This is the other side of the board. Here you can see a tiny transformer. The main capacitor. Another two capacitors, some diodes, resistors, some transistor, the contact, three pin LED and that's basically it. Here's one of the contacts and this is the other. Here you can see some eight pin chip. It's in a very strange package I have never seen before because it's SMD size but it's mounted through hole. It's HT3582DM. Now there's time to draw a schematic. So here's the schematic and it's really super simple and clever. The mains comes in, it's rectified by this diode and filtered by this capacitor. 
Then it goes into a super simple switching power supply with just one transistor. Here it has a startup resistor. This resistor will supply a small current into the base of the transistor. The transistor will partly open and it will energize the primary of the transformer. And so a voltage will appear on this auxiliary winding. It will supply more current into the base and the transistor will completely open. It will stay open until this capacitor discharges. And then the transistor starts closing and because of the positive feedback it will close quickly. The cycle repeats and it's oscillating very quickly. The voltage from the secondary will charge this capacitor through this rectifying diode and this auxiliary winding will charge this capacitor through this diode but in a negative polarity. There is no optocoupler, so how does it regulate the output voltage? It actually doesn't regulate it directly. It regulates the voltage on this capacitor. But because the voltages of this winding and this winding are about proportional, the voltage at the output is kind of roughly regulated. When the voltage on this capacitor reaches about minus 4.7 volts, this Zener diode starts conducting. And then it will kind of steal current from the base of the transistor or help to discharge this capacitor faster. So this transistor will close sooner and the duty cycle will be lower. And so the voltage will no longer rise here. So it regulates the voltage of this capacitor. But because there is some proportion between those windings, it also roughly regulates the voltage on this capacitor. The voltage is about 7 volts when there is no battery and it's not loaded. And it's about 4.9 volts when it's charging a battery and so it is loaded. This voltage goes into the chip. This chip will detect the polarity of the battery and connect it the right way. It probably also controls the maximum charging voltage and it also can detect a short circuit. It also controls those LEDs to indicate charging or fully charged. I'm not sure if the current is limited by this chip or this switching power supply. There is some current sensing resistor and if the current reaches some level, the voltage drop on this resistor will raise the voltage of the emitter and so the current no longer flows from the base to the emitter and the transistor will close. So it's possible that this switching power supply is actually what limits the current and this chip only turns it on or off and swaps the polarity. If this chip was limiting the current it would have to work as a linear regulator so it would get quite hot. I was trying to stick a bench power supply to this capacitor and it draws about 0.5 amps and after a while a thermal protection kicks in. So it seems that this chip relies on the current limit of this switching power supply. So the design is kind of clever but also kind of dodgy. There is no fuse, no fusible resistor, no inrush resistor, no interference filter and this type of diode is rated for 150 milliamps, but here it's running at 250 milliamps. Also the isolation between the primary and secondary is really questionable. And here it is less than half a millimeter. This tiny gap is isolating you from mains. Also the tiny transformer is really questionable. Let's make an autopsy of it. I desoldered it and let's take it to bits. There is some kind of a sticky tape. And this is probably the auxiliary winding. And let's take it out. One, two, six. Seven. It's 
So it was nine turns and the next is It seems like the primary, no, that's a secondary, it's a thick wire, there are two layers of a sticky tape isolating it from the auxiliary winding, just two layers of a sticky tape isolating you from mains, so this is the secondary winding. It's gonna have one, two, three, fourteen, fifteen turns. So at least the secondary wasn't touching the other windings. What's next? The next one is probably the primary and there is just one layer of a sticky tape or two layers or what but in some places there is a hole in it. So in this place there is just one layer. And that's not good. And this is the primary. So let's remove the primary, it has one, two, so it had 170 turns. So here you can see the numbers of turns. So the transformer really doesn't look very safe. The primary and secondary were isolated just by this piece of a sticky tape with a hole in it. So in one place it was isolated just by one layer of this. So it's a clever design but it's kind of minimalistic, it's a low quality and it can be dangerous. But what can you expect for one dollar including shipping? This is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos.